me. Um, I'm Eric Schott. I lead the UI team. And I think, as you've seen uh, this morning, um, we have a lot of data. And it's kind of a UI developer's dream to have lots of data and to be given the task of, show me what's happening. There's a lot of moving parts. We've seen automation, creating, taking paths from our fabric and dedicating them to different workloads. Well, that's all going on. It's dynamic. And um, I need to see what's going on. Do um, you have any Silicon Valley fans? TV show, not the... Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so you know Pied Piper, right? The greatest compression technology ever. And then they put out their beta, and no users could see what was going on. All the files said zero size, right? And they couldn't explain it. So, um, so you've got this large fabric, and you're pulling paths for your own workload usage. How do I see what's going on? How do I see if it's running well? How do I see that the system's actually doing what I want? Um, you've already seen a bunch of the Plexi UI, dashboards, configuration screens, all the typical stuff. But the visualization is kind of a very unique piece for what Plexi does. So what I've got here in, in the simulator is a 12 switch ring. So we can kind of see a little bit more at scale. So we go to our visualizer. Um, I don't know if we have UI people here. Uh, we're, we're using some of the D3 visualizations. D3 is an open source um, set of libraries that you can use to visualize all sorts of data. They've got thousands of different visualizations. Um, this here is, is a heat map that we built that we actually contributed back to the D3 library, giving back uh, a visual, visualization that we did. So what we're seeing here is 12 switches. And this is kind of the, the underlay before we put the overlay on. Um, with this visualization, we can take advantage of it to actually drill in and see what do we have for paths? Where are these paths going? How much capacity do I have? So the affinity topologies, the things that the Plexi Connect has built, let's go overlay those on top of my fabric. Show me what this automation's been doing for me. So we're correlating the paths that we had when I connected up my Plexi fabric with what I've taken to go do my workloads. And we've actually, we picked purple. <laughs> we made, we made we we're probably going to let the user color code each one of their workloads so they could easily see this. But um, what you're seeing here is the lighter purple is less used paths. The darker the color gets, the more it's used. So from, from far away, from the 10,000 foot level, I can clearly see I've run some automation. I've got some workloads going. How much am I using of my fabric? Um, and again, with the, with the D3 cord, this is the cord diagram. I can do some mouse overs and see I'm using eight paths of the 48 I have. Um, so it's very, kind of very easy to, to visualize this. Now these, these squares represent all the ports that I could then turn on traffic monitoring. And the purple ports are the ones used by my workloads. So again, this is just an overlay as well. So let's do that. So let's say, okay, I've run some automation. It's created me some paths for my workloads. I don't know which workload is which, but I see that there's, there's definitely fabric paths that have been, been programmed by Plexi. So I'm going to turn on some statistics and say, go monitor those ports and tell me what's happening. Now, this is simulated statistics. Um, we're, we're not able to generate you know, red utilization on, on, these, on these ports. But I could then let's see if this goes off the screen. I can then click on one of those ports and actually see that port is involved in this path and there's my workloads running through that port. So given the correlation of this, if all I knew was a MAC address or all I had was a VM name, I could search into this and say, tell me about this. Is it communicating? Where is it? Where is it going through my network? How's it doing port statistic wise? Is it passing traffic? So I get I get a very quick way of seeing kind of the big picture right down to the port, right down to the, to the actually, actual workload. And these would be um, the workloads that these guys have been creating through the automation. This would be you know, two VMs, <laughs> VM talking to a, a database. Can I switch to the, the Nutanix U just so while you're still Sure. 
<coughs> this is, yeah, so this is the Nutanix, and this is basically what we created for Nutanix. And right, so you can see the, you know, the smaller network. The visualization is made to scale, right? We have people deploying 20, 30 switch uh, fabrics, so we. And the idea here is that you could overlay, overlay multiple, right? We're just actually in this version, you only overlay one, but you'd have multiple with multiple colors so you can see right. how it shows. This is just some Antanix CVMs. So it's figured out where the CVMs are and then built this little apology. So some CVM, there's no CVM on those top ones, which is why it's completely gray. Basically right. this one, you know, it's just taken up that little bit of my fabric. Right, right. So that's, so that's where we've headed down this path of I, I need to be able to see what's going on because I've got all these tools running and I really want to see it. And um, go back to the, well, you can turn on your Go back to your stuff. Whichever one it is. <laughs> Do this one. So you can see the, the power of the correlation of all this information can take me right down to very specific information or just kind of the overall, I want to monitor what's happening. I guess final thing, and this is pretty much the end of this part of the demo, but the final thing shows obviously from the Nutanix perspective, when we click on those, actually you see you know, you, the flow, you see the Nutanix CVM's name appearing there, so this is a more familiar name. So you know exactly what is going over and where, right. where it's going and all that sort of right. stuff. If you just go back. Is there some sort of, <clears throat> I suppose, aggregation overview, I'm trying to think of this. You may have two different data centers running Plexi, but you may not be running Plexi between the data centers because you're over a, over a WAN. Uh, your inter-data center links are starting to be flooded. Um, that's going to be quite hard to work out. You may spot a MAC address, you may be able to spot traffic, and there's no visibility. Would you be able to see that you know one Plexi system is sending out XYZ and another one is receiving it? You, may, you won't have visibility in the middle, but... Not in, not in this type of view. Um, we could certainly correlate at multiple sources together. So that uh, other dashboard that we showed is a third-party tool called Kibana. Kibana. It's part of the Elastic. Uh, build a new, yeah, build a uh, Kibana so, dashboard yeah, for so it, we, sounds like. That's a lot of what we're doing with those kind of tools. Where we're taking our data, combining with other third-party data. But I suppose your, your, one, your data center needs to exit the Plexi system through a port to go somewhere. Yes. So you will see the visibility see of... You know that if you've got a 10 gig connection between data centers, if there's more than 10 gig attempting to flow out to the one port, you're obviously going to be congested. Yeah. And if, if we're treating that WAN link as a transparent link, meaning it's, it's actually a, a single fabric, so we have customers that are running multiple yeah. fabrics, but they're treating the WAN essentially as a transparent connectivity layer, then it would all look like this, right? Yeah, because yeah, you, you can span up to 80 kilometers between data centers. Well, yeah, we, could, we can actually go arbitrary. Just if you're going over some other service provider network, for example, right? We could, and that's a transparent layer one service, or okay. we're, we're actually now supporting layer two services as well. So you could actually look at it's the entire, you know, worldwide footprint as a single fabric if you wanted to. Uh, okay, so, that so you can have then separate plexi fabrics in each of your data centers, for example, yes. and if your carrier is running at a layer one and now layer yeah. two, that would still be seen as a single plexi. That's right. So we have that well-documented um, public reference. Yeah, we have a large service, uh, a, a service ride that's running a large network across, uh, now it's How across large? three con continents. Uh, like last 15,000 miles or something? No, it's like 110,000 route miles at the last okay. uh, time I checked, which was a few months ago. <laughs> I think it's grown since then because they, they started in Asia uh, they built a, 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 an entire fabric across the Pacific using a uh, strung together carrier uh, services between most of the locations. Uh, then they ex expanded to North America and the West Coast, and now they're building, they, I think they just uh, built, deployed their European uh, fabric as well, and they're moving into South America. So it's a, it's a massive thing. It's all managed out of New York City. Um, so it's um, pretty impressive. But they look at the, whole, the entire thing as a, as a single fabric. But I bet my UI developers who heard that question and are watching are going to figure out how to do multiple fabrics side to side with connections between. Yeah, because uh, visibility is hard. I mean, I know, you know, you chat to the network guys and, oh, there's traffic congestion. Well, what's the MAC address? You know, that's where you start. And you right, think right. that's such a kludgy way to even get this kind of info. So that looks nice.